WordPress automatically creates pretty permalinks for posts, and many people forget to optimize the post URL slugs for SEO rankings and human trust. Today, I'm going to be taking a closer look at WordPress slugs and how to optimize them properly. Hi, everyone. Welcome to WP Quickie series, WordPress uh, tips and tricks in 30 minutes or less. I am Will Brown, WordPress consultant and educator. I help WordPress designers and developers get more clients and grow their WordPress business. Before we start, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, check our Facebook group. Um, we're not broadcasting on Facebook today. I've had a little bit of technical difficulties trying to get the live stream on there, but I'll load up a video to the, to the afterwards. But we are at WordPress Sydney Meetup on Facebook. Uh, if you're on some of the socials, give me a thumbs up, click all the buttons, uh, click on subscribe, connect with me on LinkedIn, all that good stuff there. Also, um, you can uh, look at the WP Australia um, site, which is wpaustralia.org, and there we have all the WordPress meetups that are happening in Australia. And also, there's a button there to connect to us with Slack, our Slack channel, so you can chat to people in real time. Now, if you're a web developer or designer who creates and maintains client websites, I have the Ultimate Website Owner Survival Guide, which is going to help you add recurrent revenue to your business. So visit was.com.au if that is you. And the next in-person monthly evening WordPress Sydney meetup, that's a bit of a mouthful, it's on the last Monday of every month at 6 p.m. Um, you can RSVP at meetup.com slash WordPress Sydney. Um, we are going to be talking about compliance and WooCommerce. So please come along. It's at the Microsoft Reactor, which is right next to Windows Station in the Sydney CBD. Uh, come along and network uh, in person with others in the WordPress community, and there might even be some pizza to munch on. So please do see if you can come along to that. I'm also looking for suggestions to queue up some more uh, WP quickies throughout the year. Um, I'll paste that into the, the comments, but you can scan that QR code later on. It's going to link to a Google form. Uh, please uh, let me know a couple of topics for WordPress I can talk on for about 20 minutes with some Q&A at the end. Uh, that would be fantastic. But in the meantime, you can let me know who you are and where you're from in the comments. And I'll give you a shout out. We've got Alan Kessler from Annandale. Hi, Alan. Uh, we've got Stan Reisler. Hello, hello to you too. Um, so let me know who you are. Uh, it'd be great to join us um, uh, this this uh, sunny Sydney afternoon. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, let's go into the actual presentation just now and we'll talk about WordPress slugs. So let's learn about WordPress slugs, what they are and how to optimize them. This topic is kind of not really well talked about. Every, everyone kind of knows that WordPress does this automatically. And you know, when I go to clients' pages and they're maybe not having some good luck in, in Google, um, sometimes I see that you know the slugs they haven't really been optimized properly. Hi Kerry, how are you from Wollongong? <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Okay, so what is a post slug anyway? Because some people who are new to WordPress might not be familiar with this particular term. Now, WordPress defines a post slug as the combination of words after the website domain name in the URL. So each post on a website should have a unique URL, um, and the slugs at the very end of that uh, URL um, are a kind of way to make that happen. So there's an example here on screen. Um, at the top of the browser, we've got one of my little demo sites, zptdemo.wordifysites.com. I run all my sites on Wordify um, at the moment. Um, and you can see that very last bit, which is my hyphen new hyphen cat with a cat emoji. Um, and that's the post slug part of it uh, for there. So that's the bit that we're talking about. And the whole URL um, is unique for that one particular post. So let's break down um, the parts of a URL. Okay, so this URL here, um, it's got um, a, a protocol at the front. So the very first part, uh, the bit in blue, so that's the HTTPS, that is the protocol. Now, protocols tell the browser um, how to how to send and how to receive uh, data from a web server. So normally, um, in olden days, it would be HTTP, um, which is the Hypertext Transfer Protocol System, and that is uh, unencrypted. But nowadays, um, we'd always recommend all your websites are HTTPS, S stands for secure. Um, so all the data is transmitted securely encrypted over the line. So that's the protocol, uh, and that tells the browser you know what to do. So we're using hypertext uh, transfer protocol uh, for web pages. The next part um, is a subdomain. And the subdomain here in this example is in orange. It's, it is www um, for that, and then it's followed in green by this, what's called a second level domain. Uh, in this example, it's my blog. And then finally, in yellow, we have 
so in purple, we have the top level domain, and that is a .com one here. Now, sometimes a URL will not contain a subdomain. That's the orange part. So it just displays the second level and the top level domain. So that, in this example, would be just myblog.com rather than the www. Now, a URL without a subdomain, without that orange part, is just called a naked domain. And over the past few years, a lot more people are dropping the www. Um, of course, that stands for World Wide Web, and everyone knows we're on the web um, nowadays. And so a lot of people are just dropping the www, condensing that down to the naked domain. Um, in this example, just be myblog.com. Now, the next part in the URL, that's the yellow part here, is the subdirectory. And this one is called pets. And now, multiple subdirectories allow URLs to be hierarchical. So we have, have, we can imply some sort of structure for that. Now, humans and search engines kind of expect all the subdirectory in this example would be pets. And so all the pages within are associated with that subdirectory. We have some relation, some association with pets. And that's kind of the way that, you know, the hierarchy system works for that. And then the very last part of the URL, and that's a bit we're focusing on today, that is um, one that says my-new-pet. Pet, um, that is what we call the URL slug, or right? so that's what WordPress calls the URL slug. So the very, very last part of the URL, and that's the part that WordPress allows you to customize for yourself. Now, WordPress will automatically create the slug from the post title that you're creating. And what it does is it replaces spaces with dashes and by default. It puts everything in lower cases um, for those um, if you have the pretty permalinks enabled in the settings in permalinks. Let's have a quick look at that just now. Uh, let me just get rid of myself. Okay, there we go. So um, what are WordPress permalinks? So you have a setting in your WordPress website. So if you go to the settings of the dashboard, there is a link to permalinks, and this is that admin dashboard screen. Now, every post in WordPress has a unique ID associated with it. Now, posts are stored in the database, and they need a unique ID to be able to find, read, and update the post content and its related metadata within the database. Now, the default install of WordPress uses these post ideas and IDs in post slugs. And it's pretty ugly. We can see at the very top here, I'll just come back in. And you can see at the very top here, uh, the default setting is plain. Uh, and at the very end, you can see that the website slugs are in the format of a question mark, then letter P equals, and then one, two, three. And the one, two, three is an example of the post ID. And um, so with that, that would mean that um, uh, Pretty much should have seen this P and then an ID. It's not very relatable, it's not very descriptive, it's absolutely no good for search engines or humans at all. Now, any other option is better than this plain option. If I would recommend using the uh, the post name option, and that allows you to create more descriptive slugs. And this is what we call the pretty permalinks. The pretty being that you're you're prettying up these um this uh, P equals a number to something that's more relatable, something that's more humorable, something that's more searchable. So uh, if you haven't done so already, if you've got a brand new WordPress website, go into that permalinks and have a look at that just um, and consider whether or not you, know, you want to change to a post name format. If you've had a website before, if your website has been running on this um, plain um, permalink structure for a good few years, then there's something else you might want to consider before switching over is that if you're already indexed in the web um, index, so if you index by Google, if you index by Bing, um, then it already contains that URL with the question mark P equals and the number. So you want to do a pretty methodological, um, methodological um, redirect for each of those to the pretty permalinks so if that's what you want to do to switch over. But for a brand new website, definitely uh, click on the post name or one for others rather than using that plain ID system. Okay. So here we are. Um, once you have the pretty permalinks enabled, uh, when you're creating an, or editing a post, WordPress uses that post title. Um, so for example, here is my new cat. It uses that post title to make that slug all in lower cases and spaces are replaced with dashes. Now you can change the slug to anything you want. So the default one that WordPress creates, you can see on the screen here is uh, in this case, my-new-cat. And that's just WordPress suggesting um, a slug for you. It does that automatically you know, by default. But you don't have to stick with that. So you can edit that. Um, so you can click on the post um, settings in the right-hand column, right-hand setting columns, click on post, and then click on the permalinks um, area. 
um, and in, in that uh, right hand settings bar. Um, and you've got a field that's free to put any kind of slug you want. Obviously, there's a little bit of format in there. There's a little bit of um, checking as well. You can't just put anything in there. Um, but you're free to put um, the words and dashes or underscores. You, know, you can't use spaces. It, it formats all properly for you. Um, but you're free to build up your own unique slug at the end of the permalink for that. And this is what we're going to have a look at later on um, in this talk. Now, you can even put emojis. Um, in slugs. Um, it looks cool, but you probably shouldn't because it's not the best for SEO. It's not the best for trying to describe to someone over the phone which URL to go to. Um, oh, yes, yeah, just go to my dash new dash cat dash uh, cat with heart emojis. Yeah, that's not going to sit very well. So, yes, you can have emojis and it's probably a little bit fun, but you know, if you want to take your posts and pages in your SEO uh, seriously, you probably don't want to put emojis in there. And yes, I've seen lots of emojis in URLs and people too do that. Okay, now I'll get rid of myself here. Um, so, uh, slugs in taxonomy. So, uh, posts are the only URLs that are customizable with WordPress slugs. Categories and tags, which are the default taxonomies that come with WordPress, um, they also have slugs that you can use uh, to customize and edit. So, here's a couple of examples here. The first one is categories. Um, so, here uh, we've got categories, we've got uh, an example called home cooking. And again, WordPress suggests um, a, a slug um, using that same um, format of uh, lowercase, removing spaces, replacing the dash. So in this case, the slug is home dash cooking. And I've got an example URL right down below there, and it's what it would look like in a, a website. So here we've got the HTTPS protocol, zptdemo.wordpressites.com. Um, and then we've got slash category, because this is a category, and WordPress puts that um, subfolder in there. And then we've got our slug at the very end, which is home dash cooking. Uh, and similarly for tags, um, now tags in this one, I've got uh, Caroline Curry, um, which is a food item. And again, WordPress suggests the slug, um, it puts all in lowercase, again, with the spaces and from the two dashes. Um, and then we've got this, uh, this slug at the very end, Caroline dash Curry. Uh, but you are free to choose any keywords that you want in those slugs and categories and tags, it's exactly the same way as you could with your posts and your pages. So you're free to, to change that slug to you know, whatever you want. Some themes and some plugins define new custom post types. Um, um, WooCommerce is a good example of that uh, and creates a custom post type called product. Uh, and here is an example of slugs in custom post types. So here in this uh, interface, in this example, I'm adding a new product to WooCommerce. Uh, and then I've just typed in the name of the new product, which is World's Best Dad Mug. Uh, and you can see here we've got the, the URL structure, the permalink structure, which flows the same with all the different URL components right at the very end. And then we've got a choice um, to uh, what we want to put in the slug. And again, WordPress auto completes this for us, even in WooCommerce, WooCommerce auto completes it uh, for this. But we, again, we're free to choose what words we want to put into that slug if we want to optimize that for SEO and for humans. Janie Barron is asking a question. Is it better to keep it short and punchy or longer but more keywords? That is an excellent, excellent question. Um, I would uh, suggest, and I'll probably cover this in the next few slides, but I would suggest that you keep them um, as kind of as uh, short and descriptive as possible. If you're trying to do really your post, your product, you maybe only target maybe one or two uh, SEO keywords anyway. You should have a primary SEO keyword. It could be one or two um, uh, words. Um, but that's like a primary one. That's where your major focus is going to be on. And maybe you might have a secondary one or two adjacent ones that you want to maybe try and rank for. But your, your full focus should be on that primary uh, keyword. And that's the keywords that you want to put in your slug. Uh, so keep it short. Keep it descriptive. So I wouldn't have super long. Um, uh, slugs, super long ones as well. They're just difficult to share um, as well if you're looking to you know, share stuff around in, in social media and stuff as well. So great question. I would also keep it short and punchy um, and not keyword stuff at all. But great question. Thank you for asking that. Okay, so on that topic, that's a good segue. Um, how do you optimize slugs for SEO? So the URL of a page is, of course, super important in SEO. Search engines, they are going to look at the URL uh, and more specifically the slug at the end uh, to try and determine the post content's meaning. And uh, it's that web content's meaning. 
Now, and if you want to rank your web content higher in the searching results, you should probably consider making your slugs SEO friendly. Now, here are a few SEO tips that you can use with your slugs to try and rank a little bit better on Google. So the first one here is short and descriptive slugs. So this kind of probably answers your, your question, J and A Baron. Um, so ensure that you're including the main keyword that you're trying to rank for in the web content for in the slug, preferably, preferably the first word, but it doesn't particularly matter, but you want to try and keep it, you know, you know, don't have a descriptive slug, blah, 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 and then your keywords, try and keep your keywords towards the front end of the slug. And uh, just so that WordPress and Google knows that's the primary focus of that. And use words that help describe the page to a human as well. So in this example here, which is actually bad for the next one, I told you not to do this, um, but it demonstrates the point here. So the URL in here is a Wikipedia one uh, called Cats in um, Ancient Egypt. And you can see here, you know, that the slug that they're using is Cats in Ancient Egypt, which is pretty static. Wikipedia is an old website. So it just basically replaces the title with the slugs uh, for those. That can be done, however, you know, um, in the next tip I'm saying, I'm saying don't replicate the page title. Now, this is not a just don't do it ever. It's a think about how the slugs are, are being indexed by uh, Google rather than what the, what the title is meant to be. So ensure that the main keyword that you're trying to rank for is used in here uh, for this. But, you know, um, page titles, page headings, and slugs have kind of got two different um, objectives. So the, the title that's been displayed in your content, the H1, the title tag, whatever you want to call it, um, that's more of a human thing. It's more of a grab attention to a human. Yes, you want your keywords in there because you want it to rank and roll, but it's more about stopping people and, and bringing them in to read the content. But the slugs themselves, people are not generally going to be looking at the dress bar to read the slugs. Um, you know, to then decide they want to read, uh, read, read the page. That's what the titles are for in the page content. So they've kind of got two different jobs here. Yes, you want your keywords in both, um, but you don't, maybe don't necessarily need all those words that are in your page title to be replicated in the actual slug itself. And in this case here, this is from uh, my website, willbrand.com. And so I've got a post called um, SEO stop words in brackets with a list. Now, I don't particularly want SEO stop words um, dash with dash a dash list in there. I just want SEO stoppers because that's that's the focus of the content. That's where I want Google to recognize what it's about. With a list, it's just a tempting thing for humans uh, to keep reading it on. But you know, SEO stop words is the, the big thing I want Google. So I've changed the slug um, just to be SEO stop words, just to for Google can focus on that completely. Got a question here. Um, the main says our site is set up for plain permalinks. Is that why I can't see a slug option on the edited page? That is correct. So if you've got that option set as um, play, then WordPress just automatically generates that um, question mark P, P is for page, and equals, and then that ID number. You don't have that option to change the slugs because you're not generating those slugs. But as soon as you change the permalink settings to anything else, uh, then you'll get a little editor box, you'll get the permalinks uh, box as well and you can change that. But um, obviously, uh, the main is if you've got your website, you've probably run it for quite a time. I know you have been running it for a while. If you were to decide to move over to, uh, to slugs, to pretty permalinks, to the words, then you're going to have a pretty big job of trying to redirect all those P equals numbers to that particular um, uh, slug that you've got. It can be done, um, but you know that's a job that you should do. Don't just switch over because then you lose all that good SEO juice. Mate also says, uh, follow by, if you switch the site, um, ah, yes, okay, so that's what I've just been talking about. So if you switch over uh, from the P equals ID number and don't do anything about it, you're going to lose all those Google rankings. Uh, so Google itself um, is still indexing your content. It's still aware of what the content is, even though your slug doesn't isn't descriptive. But if you just change that over um, and lose it, then your SEO is your SEO's going to drop, it's going to tank. So you need to put redirection in place if you're looking to switch those over from the P numbers to a proper slug. Make sure you're redirecting them through one, and of course, one for one for each post, for each page. And finally, what's the best way to keep slugs unique? If the slug could be anything at all, um, add a date. Um, 
Dates are probably not a good thing. Uh, I think I'll cover that in the next couple of slides for those, a good reason why. Um, WordPress will not allow you to put a, a unique, a, a duplicate slug in. So I'll probably put like dash one uh, or dash two or dash three. So slugs um, as part of the URL need to be totally unique. Um, so if you've got one or two the same, then I think WordPress just adds a dash with a number afterwards. Uh, so you could replace that with maybe another keyword, another SEO keyword. Um, or, or you could put in some other, uh, you, for example, this one on the screen at the moment, uh, you could put, if you've already got a, a post that says SEO-top-words, uh, and this is an additional post with more content with the list, then you could, of course, add uh, dash with dash a dash list or with list at the end to make it unique. Uh, quick questions. Thank you very much. Okay, next one. Um, Avoid dates and slugs, this kind of answers your question in the maze. <laughs> uh, WordPress has a permalink option to include dates in your post slugs. I recommend that you don't include dates in any of your post slugs. Um, now, this may change if you're a news website or if you're an events website and you want to post something particular for that date, then you're, you're free to put the date in. That's probably a wise thing, a good thing if you're relying on the slug um, to be part of the indexing for Google. However, in general, once you start dating your content, um, Google is going to start thinking that's old, you know, in a week's time, a, a month's time, a year's time. And it's not going to give as much SEO um, credence as it would if there was no date there, because you're already telling Google that this article is related to that date, you know, and the longer it goes in, um, in backwards, the more in the future, then Google going to see that as more and more irrelevant, maybe, probably, possibly. Okay, so date-based content in generally quickly becomes irrelevant and can score low in search results. Um, I'll chat to your question in a minute, Jenny Barrett. I've only got a few slides to go. Uh, okay, so another tip is to choose your slug before you publish. And this again goes uh, goes to some of the, the, um, the questions that we talked about, you know, and changing uh, the P dash um, equals numbers into a, a proper um, slug with words. Um, and this is something you need to be aware of. If you are just doing WordPress automatic and you press publish and it's got that, you know, self-generated um, WordPress slug in it, and then maybe you're looking maybe a week, a month later, you think, actually, you know, that's not a good slug. I'm going to change it. Uh, then you have to bear in mind that uh, Google has already indexed that. It's already scored. It's already looked at your content, looked at your slug. It's ranked it. It's balanced it. And that's where you appear in the search engines. If you choose to change, uh, that slug, then that you're changing that link for there. Uh, and you're going to lose that SEO um, uh, points. Uh, Google might re-index it, and it might give you the same score, but it might not. You know, And also, if you've got stuff linking to there or you're linking to other stuff uh, from there, then it could uh, result in broken links. So um, if you are um, um, looking to do this, uh, make sure that you decide what the best slug is uh, before you go and publish. But of course, you know, if you do want to change it, make sure you put a redirection tool in place to redirect the old URL um, to the new one. And a couple of tools will do that automatically. So Yoast, SEO Press, if you're changing an existing published post, uh, then they'll prop up uh, some sort of little warning to say, hey, you know, this, this URL is already out there. You know, do you want to put a redirection in place, which is always a good thing to do. Okay, a um, couple of slides left. Uh, so stop words. Um, so remove stop words from your um, uh, slugs. Uh, stop words, they are single words that grammatically glue sentences together, uh, but it's not really necessary to understand the underlying meaning of the sentence. So examples could be uh, words like the, a, an, another, for, nor, but, those type of things. Now, I have an article on my rollbrand.com website. Um, so at the slash seo-stop-words, it's the example I've given a few slides back. Uh, and in that one, I explain more about what stop words are uh, with about 650 examples of uh, stop words that you can uh, look and remove. Now, you don't have to remove stop words um, from slugs. It just, I think it makes a little bit um, uh, condensed, it's a little bit shorter, it's easier to share as well. Uh, and for the most part, these stop words are pretty much ignored by the searches anyway. So, you know, you don't really have to have them um, in your slug if they're not adding any contextual meaning to your content. Okay, uh, target SEO keywords. Uh, so this is the last, last slide here. Um, now, the URL slug is an opportunity uh, to include SEO keywords you would like to uh, your content to rank for in the search results. 
We've talked about this a few times, but adding SEO keywords to your slug, it doesn't guarantee that search engines will rank your content for those exact keywords. You basically can't tell Google what to do, um, but it does help in the overall context and description. When, uh, when Google is looking at your content, it's looking at the slug, it's looking at your H1, your H2, your HCs, it's looking at the content, it's bringing it all together into an overall ranking. So that little bit of extra effort, putting the, your main keywords, uh, SEO keywords into your slug, that can just help Google go, yes, I really do understand what that content is about, and then to rank it properly. Now, a pro tip here is to use an SEO plugin. I like SEO Press. I use SEO Press on all my own and all my client websites, but the other ones do something similar. Um, and uh, these things can ensure that your, uh, your uh, slug keywords are relevant to your page content. So this little example here, this is from SEO Press. So I'm editing uh, a post here. This is the, the SEO stop words here. And um, down below the content, there's a little section that says uh, content analysis or something similar like that. Uh, and I've put in a couple of my, my main keywords. So stop uh, words and SEO stop words uh, for those. And uh, SEO Press will analyze the content. Uh, and you can see here, there's a couple of um, um, amber ones here that I need to, to address. But uh, if you go down below, you can see where the arrow is pointing. It says keywords in permalink. So um, most of the SEO plugins, they think that that's pretty important. So your SEO keywords should be in your permalink, in your slug. Um, um, and that one's got a green tick for that one. So it's just a, a good little thing to have, uh, indications. Uh, before you publish, scroll down there and just make sure that those things, most of the stuff are in green that you can get to. Um, so that works for SEO Press. It works for the other ones as well, the other two competitors. But I love SEO Press. That's what I use. OK, uh, last question here. Um, we have uh, Janie Barron says, so if you change your protocol to postname permalinks, it will screw up all your old posts. It doesn't change from that point forward. So we're talking about protocol. So we're talking about HTTP to HTTPS. Yes is the short answer. So a, a URL is completely unique, and that also includes HTTP and HTTPS. So you can have the same URL, um, so you can have the SEO stop words URL, um, but the HTTP is a completely different ranking to HTTPS. So if you are moving your website over from insecure, old, rubbish HTTP over to brand new, great, secure HTTPS, um, then you need to put something in place to redirect all that content over from a Google's point of view to your HTTPS stuff. And that can be done at a hosting level. Uh, you can do that in the, most of the hosting files have something called a, HT, a .ht access. Uh, and there's little rewrite rules uh, that you can say things like for um, everything that's HTTP, um, then I want to transfer that over to HTTPS with the same URL. Um, and it redirects uh, that as a 3-1 uh, for that. So uh, there's all encompassing stuff. You can do that. Some of the some of the, um, the SEO plugins will allow you to put general rules like that as well. Uh, and some of the redirection plugins, uh, like there's a, a redirection plugin called Redirection, <laughs> simply enough. Uh, and it allows you to put um, uh, the names just gone from, from my head, uh, regular expressions. Um, so you can do the similar same thing um, um, if you don't have access to the file system within plugins like redirections um, um, using regular expressions where you kind of you match the URL format and say, you know, if it's gone HTTP, then I want to um, strip out the next thing, put an S, make it HTTPS and redirect that as a 301. Google will see that um, for that. OK, sorry, I just made a change from <laughs> plain permalinks to post name. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so anytime you change anything in the permalink, um, anytime it changes from one thing to another, then that is a completely separate new link and you need to do a redirection on that. Okay, there we go. Uh, WordPress slugs, an essential part of your post URLs for humans and for search engines. Uh, make sure you take the time to optimize your slugs uh, for your web content. Uh, great questions. Thanks very much. Hopefully I answered them okay. Um, if you've got any more, you can post them down there or post them in the, the, the Facebook group uh, and I'll answer them later on. Uh, please do connect with me on LinkedIn, on Instagram and Twitter as well. Um, and next week, next week, I am going to be talking about removing headers and footers using CSS um, for this. So if you've not got 
Beaver Builder, if you're not with Elementor Pro, if you're looking to do sales, marketing, landing pages, you just want to get rid of that header and footer, um, I'll show you a quick, easy way to do that next week. So thank you so much for joining me. Uh, take care, everyone, and I'll see you next week. Bye.